Joining me now from Los Angeles, California, board certified anesthesiologist and member of the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons, Dr. Marilyn Singleton, MD. Doctor, the White House and this Operation Warp Speed, I think it's a great thing uh, that we accelerate, obviously, trying to find a vaccine for any virus, including the Wuhan coronavirus. When you look at what's going on and the, the, the fact that they're trying to fast track this, are you optimistic that there, there could be a vaccine in the next six to nine months? Perhaps when you look at the history of vaccines, though, my goodness, the mumps had the fastest one, and that was four years. There was never a vaccine created for HIV. And SARS-1, and SARS is the name, SARS-CoV-2 is the name of the virus that causes COVID-19 disease. And when SARS came out back in 2003, there was a lot of research on it. And in fact, they were going to start a vaccine and then SARS just disappeared. So it's very unclear just in looking at the history. Yeah, and there are a lot of vaccines out there. We don't have any kind of inoculation for herpes, for example. I mean, it's just, uh, there are tons of them. It's just the unfortunate reality when we just don't know if there'll ever be a vaccine for this. But I wanna talk about testing with you. We have these, especially the blue state governors coming out here and they're saying, well, we need more testing and we're gonna have more testing. And so they start doing more testing. And lo and behold, when they do more testing, they suddenly find more people who are suffering from the Wuhan coronavirus. But the paradox here is they keep saying that they're not gonna open up their states until the numbers start dropping. But the more you test, the more positive cases you're gonna have. How does this end? Well, this is what is so strange. And I have yet to find out what is defined as a case? Is a case someone who's sick, someone who went to the doctor, or someone who merely tested positive? And we don't know, and no one seems to say, and we see these numbers thrown up on the screen like sports scores, and where more and more and more COVID cases, are they really COVID cases? And we have another problem with the COVID cases, and this is the directive to determine COVID deaths and record them as COVID deaths, even if the person did not die of COVID disease, but either had a positive test and they more likely died of the disease that they had before they got COVID. And this is wrong and there's a financial incentive and you can hardly blame the hospitals, but the federal government has given $10 billion to hospitals who take care of more than 100 COVID patients. You tell me why you'd be incentivized. Yeah, and, and, and to drill down a little bit further, from what I understand, Medicare pays more if there's a Wuhan coronavirus diagnosis for the patient, and uh, they get even the hospitals get even more money if there's a ventilator used, which really uh, brings into question. So when we look at Dr. Fauci coming out and Dr. Burks, and they keep saying the same thing, uh, and they keep quoting these numbers, and they keep recommending all of these, what I consider draconian measures for the American people. Is their doctor not a bit of an ego involved here? In other words, these Fauci's and these Burks and the rest of them and some of the politicians have so much invested in this. They have come out and they've scared the daylights out of the American people that the ego starts taking over and, and not admitting that, hey, you know what? I think we screwed up. That's right. They've boxed themselves into a corner. It's understandable in the first couple of weeks when nobody knew what was going on. OK, full court press. Let's get the hammer out. And then as the facts start to come out, even as far back as the Diamond Princess, where 83 percent of the people in this Petri dish did not test positive, that people might think, hmm, maybe we're being a little too strong in these things. And what is beginning to be a worse problem are the consequences of social isolation. Yep. The domestic violence is up, alcohol sales are up 55%, and we're gonna be a bunch of drunk wife beaters by the time this is all over. It's un-American what we're doing to ourselves. It's also inhumane. Americans 
Just human beings cannot function the way that governments have told us to function these last two months, and that's why you're seeing people push back, whether they're in blue states or they're in red states. They want their lives back. Dr. Singleton, thank you. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube, and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.